to Christopher Cutts Gallery. I'm Christopher Cutts and right now the gallery is hosting an exhibition by the artist Xiao Gu Wei. Xiao is a Chinese artist from Guangzhou. He immigrated to Canada back in 2001 and as you can see from behind me we have this large format painting called A Saturday Afternoon. I, I think it's important for me just to say a few things about Xiao. Uh, well, Xiao was working in China and when he first came uh, to uh, North America, he worked in oil paints and his work was pretty much, uh, let's call it a Chinese pop. And back in 2004, he made a trip to Italy, specifically Florence, and he looked at uh, the Italian masters from, let's say, um, Giotto to Piero della Francesco. And it was upon that visit to Italy that he made an about face and changed his whole approach to painting. And he changed his medium. As you can see, these paintings here are egg tempera paintings. Now, a few things about egg tempera. Egg tempera was a medium that was used quite a lot, let's say in about the 12th and 13th, maybe a little bit into the 14th century. By the time the 15th century came along, uh, it faded pretty much out of favor. Uh, uh, oil painting took precedence. Uh, egg tempera is a medium where you're usually, you're using the, the yolk of an egg, and that is the binding uh, medium for the pigment. You make a paste from there, and of course you want to, uh, they, they prefer to use uh, uh, yolks that are a little lighter in tone, but they say it doesn't really affect the color that much because they water it down as well. Um, some of the uh, inherent natures of the medium is that uh, it's, uh, uh, it has wonderful quality of uh, uh, translucence. The colors have a certain uh, um, vibrance that you won't find in other mediums. However, it's a very difficult medium to work in. Uh, literally, each stroke is setting as you're placing it. So uh, it's a material that one needs to practice a lot to become proficient at it. And to become an expert or master at it, you have to be doing it all the time. And that's what Xiao Gu Yi is, is a master of working in that particular uh, medium. Um, as you can see from this painting, also his works are uh, narrative allegorical base. This is called A Saturday Afternoon. And you can see there's a lot of activity going on. And Xiao does not necessarily want to uh, tell our, anybody exactly what's going on. It's a, an open-ended story and you can you just follow the narrative and take it to wherever you want to. You see this gentleman is climbing up a ladder. You see that this is a, um, a motif that Xiao's used on a couple of different occasions. And um, there's, uh, I, I've heard him reference that there's really no escape. So, so you're climbing up to, I guess, the sky, but nowhere. You're not getting out of that painting. We're now looking at unclothed Hercules. And um, you can see uh, there's this gentleman who's almost completely without clothes and three ladies and they're playing cards. And um, as you look at Xiao's paintings, you'll see cards often are uh, part of his vernacular. And in this case, uh, the mighty Hercules is, is losing, as you can see, um, because Lady Luck is not going his way because the, <laughs> the, the deck is stacked. These ladies, are, of course, are cheating. And uh, Hercules is, as you can see with a little smile on his face, is happily losing. Now we're looking at a painting called In Search of Lost Time, a tribute to Marcel Proust. Um, this particular painting uh, sums up a lot of what Xiao uses as his um, subject matter. And In Search of Lost Time was a seven volume no novel by Proust and he talks about a, a particular thing called involuntary memory. And in essence what's that mean is that well, you smell something or you see something a memory comes flashing back. 
And when you look at Xiao's paintings, a lot of the subject matter are Xiao's past experiences. So he draws upon his own uh, personal history as his subject matter, and he creates these narratives. One thing that Xiao talked about is that uh, as a young child, he very much liked the game blindfolded. And it's a subject that you see over and over again. You see this uh, young lady here who's blindfolded and people are teasing her, lifting up her dress, etc., pulling her hair up. Uh, there's, a, once again, that kind of playful mischievousness is at, uh, at uh, play again here. You see the gentleman holding the cat, dead bird. There's a lot of different things going on here. Um, another thing I want to pull your attention to is this particular painting. Uh, also, there are whole, all of the paintings are egg tempered, but you see that this has, a, like a Saturday afternoon, and even like Nomad, are paintings that have sort of a, uh, let's say, call it a chalky quality about them. And that is primary because he puts a fair amount of uh, calcium carbonate in the work, and it gets this sort of flash, uh, uh, flat, um, sort of luminous quality about it. Once again, you know, uh, there's a lot going on here, and uh, if you're not watching out, somebody could be playing some sort of trick on you. The painting we're looking at right now is called Nomad, and this is the earliest uh, picture in the exhibition. It was created in 2009, and what I wanted to draw your attention is, is this sort of a uh, um, mixture of uh, both historical and contemporary motifs. So here you have uh, uh, in the traditional Chinese opera garb, uh, also this cloak here. But then if you look a little bit more over to the right, you see uh, a gentleman wearing a pair of jeans, leather shoes. Uh, so you get this idea of, of both historical and contemporary. Um, Xiao's work um, has this play about itself, and play is a big element about his work. It also has this sort of sort of the mischievousness about the work. So as you can see, uh, this gentleman's not paying too much attention, and there we have another gentleman's got his hand in his pocket. This is something you'll see over and over in Xiao's work. This is the most recent painting in the exhibition, and the painting that the exhibition takes its title from. It's called The Feast. Um, the technique, also egg tempera, however you see uh, it has a, a different quality than something like In Search of Lost Time, which has a, let's say, a lighter, chalkier quality. In this one, there's less calcium carbonate, calcium carbonate in the, uh, the medium, and there's more glazes, so you get this very deep black here. And the glazes create this sort of, uh, uh, it, it, there has a certain uh, luminosity about it um, that you kind of are lost in the black. It's not a black that just stops there, it sort of pulls you back. Uh, the, as you can see from the subject matter, this is, I, I comment on uh, excess and uh, I guess gluttony we would say. And I remember uh, uh, at the opening a, a gentleman came up and said, uh, how come there is uh, uh, no oysters? And Xiao quickly said, this is the second helping. Now we're looking at uh, the butcher lesson. And uh, I can't help but think of uh, the 19th century painter Soutine and all of his abattoir paintings, but here you have uh, you know, the hog is spit open there. Um, you have here, they're about to do, the, I guess they're slaughtering this pig. But the, the interesting thing about this pig is it has uh, very anthropomorphic qualities it, and quite seductive, really, the way it's bound up. So there's this ambiguity. There's other classic things, once again, cards, lots of whispering going on, and uh, lots of provocative dress, and uh, there's always a good amount of leg being shown in Xiao's paintings. Again, this is a painting that's less calcium carbonate and has that rich uh, black background that you kind of go deep into. This wonderful little bird here. It's just really quite marvelous. Once again, you have to remember that every time he makes a brush stroke, all of the fine work and the hair here is as he's doing it, setting. This is an unforgiving medium, so you have to be uh, well acquainted with it. Okay, the painting we're looking at now is titled Winner's Game. And this is probably the most overtly political piece that Xiao's ever done. And it actually references uh, Guantanamo Bay. 
However, you see there's sort of a little bit of a role reversal here is uh, the soldiers are females and uh, of course there's these males and uh, it looks like he's about to get waterboard. You see them bounded up here. Once again, cards, you know, certain little iconic iconography that is Xiao's vernacular you see over and over again. But the one twist in here is that if you once again look at the face of these bound soldiers, um, they all have smiles on their face. And, um, and if you see that they're really not tied, there's no bounding, and that this is more play than actual uh, uh, torture. And uh, this funny twist, and of course you can see the demure of the female soldiers are very alluring and uh, quite seductive. Um, of course you have here a bird cage. You know, I guess this is the reference about being in a camp where you don't get the opportunity to, to have the liberty and freedom of one that uh, is not in such a place. Now we're looking at a painting called The Martyrdom of Beauty. And um, it is one of his darker paintings again. However, it doesn't have as many glazes as a uh, painting like The Feast. So you see that the, it's still a very dark black, but it, it's more of a matte black, uh, a little more opaque, where the other one was very translucent and you kind of went back into it. Now, The Martyrdom of Beauty is uh, a comment on the excesses that one will go to be supposedly beautiful. Now, if you notice, all of the doctors and nurses are quite attractive people, and there's a lot of whispering going on, and a lot of flirtation, and uh, this poor lady's laid out, uh, you know, about to be injected. I guess she's going to get some sort of process. I suppose she's going to maybe get a, a, a new set of breasts, because you see her, there's this one attendant nurse with this, a set of breasts here. This painting also references uh, St. Agatha. And Saint Agatha was a Sicilian uh, saint that uh, a, supposedly a very beautiful woman and uh, a prefect's governor fancied her and made some uh, moves on her but she didn't want to have anything to do with him. She had dedicated her life to uh, uh, God and her chastity. And uh, when she, he, she rebuffed this gentleman, he <clears throat> had her taken and thrown into a brothel and then tortured. And then he actually had her breasts cut off. And I, there's that reference here, this sort of martyrdom allegory, the saint martyrdom, saintly martyrdom, as well as the martyrdom that we go on. Um, this isn't about this. This is more about this sort of absurdity that we have with looking a certain way and the things that we will do. We will literally martyr ourselves for uh, a, a beauty that uh, society seems to endorse. The next two paintings we're going to look at were created after Xiao had come back from a trip to China. He hadn't been there for uh, a number of years. And uh, he told me that, of course, when he went back, uh, um, a number of his friends had done very well, so they had a lot of feasting. In fact, this painting used to be called uh, The Feast, but he's changed the title to Naya Tomori. And Naya Tomori uh, references the practice of eating sushi or sashimi off uh, um, uh, the body of a naked woman, as you can see. But once again, excess. And a lot of his trip, he said, was a lot of excess here. So people have eaten more than they possibly uh, could. They've obviously had quite a lot to drink. And you see this poor chap is just hurling, but he's got his back turned and, whoops, somebody's picking his pocket again. This is the other painting that uh, Xiao did upon his return from his trip to China. It's called uh, The Salmon Fish from Norway. Um, now, being Canadian, we get a lot of salmon here, so we don't make such a big deal. But in China, to get a big, large, huge fish, salmon fish, is quite a delicacy. And literally, uh, um, what would happen is people would gather around, the chef would be there, and they'd be almost on a stage. So that's what he's portraying, is everybody's gathering around the big fish, sort of in awe about what they're going, about to do. But there's a lot of activity going on as well. You know, this little child here, this 
uh, I, I would say his guardian, perhaps his mother there, who you can't see her face because of hairs. And then you have this little boy here running across. Now, I like to refer this little guy here as the outsider, who I believe Xiao is. And uh, in a number of uh, Xiao's paintings, you'll see a little figure kind of scurrying across the bottom of the painting. Okay, now we're looking at an, an absolutely exquisite painting called Manjusaka. Um, Manjusaka is a flower, and actually you see this character is holding the Manjusaka, and it's a very exotic looking flower. And uh, there's a lot of Manjusaka flowers in Japan, etc. <clears throat> Um, now you can see that this is a park scene and it's painted like a, a, a 15th century Italian landscape. Um, it's, as you can see, absolutely exquisite, but there's so much activity going on in this painting. You can see here, it looks like a couple of lovers snuggling in the bushes there. And then it looks like there we're getting uh, a mugging taking place. Uh, here they're going for a lovely walk, but over there it looks like there's a, a rape scene. So uh, all kinds of things that seem to go on in our parks today have been going on in parks forever. Um, now, of course, the painting references uh, Italian Renaissance, but it is a contemporary setting. You see the little helicopter here zooming across. A wonderful shift in space. Really an exquisite painting. A huge influence on Xiao was the, the work of Pia della Francesco, and his figurative work have a sort of corporeal plasticity that you would find in, in that Renaissance master, the four, uh, 15th century Renaissance master. Anyway, absolutely exquisite painting, as you can see. And uh, Xiao is a huge talent, uh, and it plays when you look at his paintings. This is an important artist.